Here's a riff that's older than I am from a bizarre, amazing heavy band, the severely underrated technical doom band Confessor. It's kind of a meme to ask where the one is in rhythmically complex metal, or to say that it's hard to headbang to. Normally, I don't think this is actually true. I think it's normally pretty clear in like Meshuga and Carbomb when you get a big downbeat, and in most of the riffs, there are pretty clear cues for headbanging. Confessor does a lot of really cool, unusual rhythmic stuff, including some strange tempo modulations and some cool rhythmic transformations that were decades ahead of their time. What I'm gonna talk about in this video, though, is how in their music, I think it actually often is hard to find the one or to headbang using the first riff from the first track of their first album. In some ways, the section is pretty simple. The guitar part is about as physically easy as it gets. It's probably about as hard as smoke on the water. And it's pretty much all eighth notes at a moderate tempo. The difficulty here is fully conceptual rather than physical. The main thing is that this riff straddles a weird line between being repetitive and being linear. There are a bunch of little chunks that repeat, but not quite enough to make anything predictable. In fact, I think that because everything is so self-similar, it actually makes it harder to predict. And when I say to predict, I mean also to learn. But beyond just being unpredictable, this riff feels like it messes with my sense of meter and therefore my sense of where one is in a kind of deeper way. It's not like there's a clear one that the band is hearing and it's hard for us to learn to hear it. Instead, I think in this riff, the idea that there even is such a thing as a strong downbeat is kind of existentially challenged. There are approximately one million theories of meter and almost all of them give a lot of importance to repetition. One super influential formulation of this was Fred Lairdahl and Ray Jackendoff's set of metric preference rules. The first and most important of which is parallelism, which is the idea that if we hear something and it's in one metric position, and then we hear it again, we'll strongly prefer to give it the same metric position. This works in mild and spicy meters more or less the same way. Here's a spicy example from Dream Theater, where the same little opening phrase starts each of these meter changes. That is, it always sounds like a downbeat, even though the length until the next downbeat is constantly changing. The problem is that in Alone, these sorts of cues don't work that well. In my transcription, I've treated this opening three note cell with a chug, then power chord slides, as a marker of one and made it so that every measure starts with one of these cells. This follows a certain sort of logic, but I don't think actually reflects how I hear it. And it's certainly not the only type of logic I could have used to choose where the bar lines go. Really, I don't think I hear any meter in this intersection at all. Or if I do, I just hear the punches from the other guitar and the drums as the strong beats, even though these wouldn't make much sense as the basis for a traditional meter, per se. That's kind of what I'm getting at. In this first part of the section, I don't think meter is a very useful way of thinking about things, even if we call it a changing or asymmetrical or some other type of fancy meter. Instead, it feels like I'm just sort of stringing short rhythms together. It's more like I'm hearing, okay, there's one hit and then there's another hit and then there's three hits in a row um, and I'm kind of just like memorizing it like that. When the vocals start after the little cymbal break, the pattern stabilizes a little bit. There's one time through that first 4-4 measure, then it alternates between the 9-8 measure and the 5-8 measure several times. This repetition is 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 repetition. This repetition is hard to hear, though, because the drums are at first all over the place, then they start a 4-4 backbeat pattern, but on the last beat of what I'm calling the 5-8 measure. This backbeat goes on until the start of the next riff, with some jumpy triplets added in the bass drum and bass, and a change to the guitar part after a little bit, too.
The main thing with all of this is that the rhythms sound super arbitrary. There's just one kind of odd one out measure at the beginning before this 9858 pattern really starts. Then the pattern goes through kind of like three and a half times before switching to just the low chugs. And then also the drums go from accent based stuff to a backbeat to triplets, all with changes that come at kind of weird places relative to the guitar pattern and are definitely not governed by multiples of four, which would be the kind of more common thing that you'd expect. The overall impression is that there are a bunch of jagged edges in all of this, both within the guitar part and in the way the drums interact with it. It's all like lurching back and forth, deceptively very slippery to try to predict, and it sounds extremely live in the way that all these instruments are pushing and pulling against the tempo slightly. Some speculation. This album was released in the same year as the debut album from another rhythmically tricky band that you just might have heard of. Even in these early days, Meshuggah's rhythmic oddness was pretty different from what Confessor was doing. For one thing, it was already mostly built on rigid 4-4 chunks, even if they hadn't quite yet dug into the phasing thing as much as they would later. Confessor and their super arbitrary and jagged brand of rhythmic difficulty didn't make it past their first massively innovative album, and neither did the technical doom subgenre or this style of singing, really, for that matter. But listening to how alien and challenging this album is a full 30 years later, I wonder how heavy music might have been different if they had stuck around. In other words, it's fun and interesting to imagine a world in which this album doesn't sound so completely out there a world in which this became part of the fabric of influences for heavy technical music the same way that Meshuggah did. Anyways, thanks for watching. If this is your first introduction to Confessor, thank you for clicking on a video about a band you didn't know, and I highly recommend checking out this album for a heavy, bizarre, disorienting ride. See ya.